This presentation aims to provide an in-depth look into the ELORAN and LORAN C systems from the perspective of an operator of a general aviation or commercial aircraft. Navigation is a crucial component of aviation, and the equipment we use should be understood considering it is relied on so heavily. It is the responsibility of a pilot to not only understand how to use the equipment on the aircraft, but also have at least a general understanding of that equipment, why it is needed, and how it functions. Although Global Navigation Satellite Systems, or GNSS, has become a, the primary tool for navigation, ELORAN is still used in combination with GPS, and its incorporation is important for redundancy purposes. Failure of GPS could leave the aviation industry in a bad situation without a backup system. Upon completion of this presentation, you should have a clear understanding of both LORAN C and ELORAN navigation systems. Topics that will be discussed will include the theory of operation of the systems, the basic principles of navigation with LORAN, the frequency of operation used for LORAN, functionality of the receiver unit, visual displays of the system, the numerical designation of a LORAN chain, the transit sequence from a LORAN chain, the transit format for master and slave stations, and ELORAN slash GPS receivers. Also, a brief outline of the history of the LORAN system will be included. Long Range Navigation, abbreviated LORAN, is a ground-based navigation system that was developed during World War II by the United States. Once operated by the U.S. Coast Guard, LORAN C was used for navigation by sea vessels and aircraft alike. LORAN C does not use GNSS, but rather multiple ground stations that emit signals which are received by the LORAN C equipment on the aircraft. The process is known as hyperbolic navigation. This technology is somewhat outdated but is still a reliable and precise means of determining position on a two-dimensional plane. In 2010, the decision was made that the system was no longer necessary in the United States. The outdated system was shut down and ground stations in the U.S. stopped transmitting the Loran C signals. This meant there was no non-GNSS backup system in case of a GPS navigations failure. This problem sparked the development of Enhanced Loran, or ELORAN, as a solution, eliminating some problems with the old Loran C system while still using the same concept and ground stations. Long range navigation, although old, is a reliable form of navigation. It has played an important role in aviation navigation and will continue to do so in the near future. As previously mentioned, long range navigation is a hyperbolic navigation system. In other words, the aircraft receives a pulse from one or more pairs of radio stations spaced many kilometers apart and measures the time delays between the arrival of the pulses from each station. The LORAN system is able to accurately calculate the aircraft's relative position in two dimensions using its own internal time and the timing of the signals. When using at least two pairs of radio stations, a significantly more accurate position can be determined. For each pair, one station is the master station, while the other is the slave station that possesses a clock synchronized to the master station. The synchronization of the clocks at the two stations is essential in order for them to emit pulses of radio energy simultaneously. These radio pulses travel at the same constant speed from both stations in all directions. The signals will arrive at the LORAN receiver nearly instantaneously since they travel close to the speed of light. The LORAN system is able to measure the time interval between the arrival of the two signals in microseconds, then consult electronic tables that place the aircraft on a hyperbola that corresponds with a time interval. Using a second pair of stations, the same process can be repeated, placing the aircraft on a second hyperbola. The intersection of these two hyperbolas gives a more accurate reading of the aircraft's relative position. An upgraded system was eventually introduced, named Enhanced Long Range Navigation, or ELORAN, ELORAN is accurate enough to be used for non-precise aircraft instrument approaches when combined with an altimeter. Like GPS, all of ELORAN's transmissions are synchronized to UTC. How the receiver unit functions. I will be talking about how and where the signals are retrieved from, how the aircraft's position is determined, and some complications with the signals. The receiver receives signals from a chain of master and secondary stations, with each chain consisting of three to six stations. The secondary station sends signals in bursts of eight, 
while the master station sends signals in bursts of nine. This allows it to be easily distinguishable from the secondary station. The stations send out a synchronized radio signal based around 100 kHz at approximately the speed of light. The closer station signal would reach the receiver sooner than the further station. From this, the receiver computes the difference in time from both stations, and this will repeat as the aircraft moves, thus allowing the difference in signal timing to be observed. Throughout a specific area, Lorand charts were made based on various recorded time differences between stations. These charts consisted of many hyperbolic lines that tell the position of a vessel depending on the time difference. Once the aircraft is on a specific hyperbolic line, the receiver will receive signals from other stations in the area and so the intersection of both lines will accurately determine the aircraft's position. The formula on the bottom describes how the vessel receives the signals. Time of arrival equals to time of reception minus time of transmission, which equals to the primary factor, which is the delay through the air, plus the secondary factor, which is propagation delay over sea, plus additional secondary factor, which is delay over terrain, plus the delay due to receiver, electronics, and cables. Complications can occur with the receiver and the station's transmitting signals, which come in the form of sky waves. Sky waves, which are reflected from the ionosphere, cause distortions to the pulse shape of the received signals. However, sky waves take longer to get to, to the receiver than ground signals, so the receiver is able to differentiate between them by making the selection of the cycle earlier. From this, the receiver then compares the latest cycle recording to one that was saved from before. And if the phase shift of the signal is zero, the receiver can identify the pulse. The Loran unit consists of a signal processor, navigation computer, control knobs and buttons, and a display. There are many different manufacturers for Loran units and therefore there are different ways that they can be programmed and the way they display information also varies. The Loran system can show the pilot useful navigational information such as distance, bearing, and time to the waypoint. The system can be upgraded for more navigational capabilities such as track or speed over the ground or even nearest airports. The mode position knob consists of the following input options. GRI displays range and bearing to the station, displays ground track error, ground speed, cross track error, and estimated time of arrival to destination. SIG, which allows the user to see signal to noise values on the upper display, signal strength, envelope to cycle difference. CAL, which allows the user to enter magnetic variations, calibrates latitude and longitude displays, and selects cross-track error methods. NAVF displays bearing and range from the waypoint, ground track angle, ground speed, cross-track error distance, and point. POS displays current position with latitude and longitude indications, displays Loran's position, and displays stored coordinates for waypoints. Nav displays range and bearing to the destination and other information that is similar to Nav F. The numbers zero to nine are waypoints. This displays waypoint numbers from zero to 199 and allows a user to set from and to waypoints. Display and control buttons. The buttons on the unit can be used with relation to the selected mode to perform a desired operation. For example, the STO button can be used to store current coordinates. The TO button can be used to navigate to a set waypoint and the from button can be used to set a waypoint as a departure point. 
The display is lighted with embedded LEDs and displays two rows of seven digits which can display the information that is inputted by the pilot through the unit's control panel. As mentioned before, there are two types of transmitting stations. One station is the master station and the other is the slave station, which are set up in a chain. The chain contains the master transmitter along with at least two slave transmitters. For the chain to be able to operate, there is a need for the master transmitter to activate the slave transmitters. This happens when the master station's transmission reaches the slave station with a delay due to travel time from the baseline, which is referred to as the baseline travel time or BTT. After reaching the slave station, there is another delay caused by the diffusing process this time, which is referred to as the coding delay or CD. It is interesting to state that these delays throughout the transmissions are considered as emission delays or ED. Thus, the stations transmit the information according to the description provided for the group repetition intervals. As mentioned before, the receiver can distinguish the time difference from when the master transmits to when the reception receives the signal. It relies on the periodic time difference and it subtracts the time the master transmission travels until it reaches the receiver. In addition to another time differential, this would create a hyperbolic line of position. The hyperbolic navigation system utilizes either phase difference measurement or a time difference measurement. To provide an example, consider an aircraft Loran receiver which picks up the pulses emitted via the stations and provides the position information. After aircraft onboard computer transfers this collected information to the GPS screen, the computer determines the aircraft ground speed and its position related to the ground. It is important to mention that the aileron system signals contain the radio waves which require a clear path between the transmitters and the receivers. This effect due to the line of sight error is compensated by two ways. One is placed in the transmitting station on the elevated areas or the other solution is to expand which means to build more aileron transmitting stations. The receiver Loran C is the predecessor of Eleron. It was created as an advancement over Loran A where range was range and accuracy was improved from tens of miles down to a quarter mile. It was costly when it was first introduced, therefore it was only used by military for uh, uh, coastal navigation. It came into common use uh, in the late 1970s when electronics got a little bit cheaper. Loran C. Just like Loran A, or the very first Loran, Loran C is organized into chains of three to five stations, with one master station and sev several secondary stations. Power output varying from 200 kilowatts to 2 megawatts. Uh, it's important to mention that the range and accuracy of the system is heavily dependent on the radi uh, radiated power. The greater the power, the further the signal can be received. Each station radiates signals in pulses of 8, with the master emitting an additional ninth for ad identification purposes. The group repetition interval, GRI for short, is the time interval between two successive master station signals and it consists of three things number one is pulse spacing uh, the first eight pulses of the master's group are spaced at 1000 microseconds and the ninth spaced at 2000 it's the same case with the slave stations with the exemption of the ninth pulse and also each pulse uh, is about 200 microseconds 
Number two is the station's um, is the recovery time for the station's receiver. Uh, the lower on station must be given sufficient time to process the group information. Uh, the recovery time ver uh, varies between signals received. It takes 4,000 microseconds. Recovery time between the master and the first secondary, and 3,000 microseconds between each secondary. Number three is the coding delay. Uh, the coding delay assigned to each station. The purpose of this delay is to allow each station in the chain to transmit sequentially in time without the overlap of the different signal groups anywhere in the system. It takes into account the baseline length, uh, distances between secondaries, and the number of secondaries in the chain. The GRI designator is a GRI divided by 10 used as a symbol to, identif to identify and designate the Loran chain. For example, the Southeast US 7980 has a GRI of 79,800 microseconds, almost 0 0.08 of a second. Within the chain, the master is designated as M, while the secondaries are identified by the letters Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee, and Zulu. The selection of the GRI depends on uh, baseline length, which is the distance between the master station and the secondary stations. Uh, to give you a sense of how much this has an effect on GRI, uh, it takes about 33,000 microseconds for the radio signal to, tra to travel 1,000 kilometers. So the GRI can't possibly be lower than that. Second is the amount of, uh, is the number of secondary stations. All the secondary stations must be accommodated with delays such as recovery time and decoding delay to prevent interference. Third is uh, geography. For example, it's easier for the signal to propagate over seawater as opposed to land or mountainous terrain. Uh, four is nearby chains with consideration given to interference. And the last but not least is a duty cycle of the transmitters. Uh, a faster GRI means the average power of the transmitted signal is higher, so the final stage in this transmitter requires more cooling. Uh, with an average baseline length and three slaves, the minimum GRI cannot be less than, much less than 50,000 microseconds. The selection of the GRI the sequence of transmission for Lorentz C goes as, as follows. The sequence starts with the transmission of the master's group of nine pulses. The master group is then received at each secondary, Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee, and Zulu, delayed in time by the amount of the individual baseline distances. The baseline distance is the distance between the master and each secondary. Anyway, the first secondary, X-Ray, when it receives the master's f first pulse, it initiates a countdown, or a fixed delay, to when it will commence its transmission of pulses. This fixed delay, referred to as the coding delay, allows for the reception of all nine of the master's pulses, plus the recovery time needed by the secondary equipment. The signal transmitted by the first secondary must travel to the next secondary, Yankee, in the proper sequence. Yankee must process the master pulse group, the x pulse group and its own delay before it initiates its own transmission. This sequence is repeated throughout the chain until finally the master must receive the last secondary pulse group before it can begin a new cycle of operation. The sequence of Eleran and GPS differences. The key difference of Eleran from the Loran C is the addition of another data channel. With the addition of another data channel, this allows Eleran to compensate for demanding requirements of aviation non-precision instrument approaches. The data channel allows for the possibility for Eleran and the Global Navigation Satellite System to work seamlessly. Eleran has improved GPS integrity and information, thus allowing the information that is received to be more accurate and reliable than GPS alone.
GPS is susceptible to interference and is also vulnerable, which is why Eleran was developed in the first place. Eleran is an independent system that can be used alongside the Global Navigation Satellite System while keeping the safety and security benefits. Even when the satellite services are being interfered with, allowing Eleran to act as a reliable backup for the Global Navigation Satellite System since Eleran meets performance criteria for aviation accuracy and availability. Eleran and GPS Operation Frequency Identifying the frequencies in which the Eleran system is used. Loran system is based on multiple transmission stations that emit timed pulses centered at 100 kHz, which falls between a range of 90 kHz and 110 kHz. Each station emits eight pulses spaced 1,000 microseconds apart. Most of the bandwidth is used to ensure that the amplitude and phase of the essential spectral components of the received pulses are not significantly altered by the circuits of the receiver. The acceptable bandwidths lie between 3 and 6 decibels. Unlike the GPS system, you are unable to interfere or jam with the Loran system because of its high-powered signals. These high power transmitters and low frequency signals for Eleran can be combined with the Global Navigation Satellite System. This means that low-end receivers can mitigate the impact of disruptions. For marine use, Eleran system is being used, which requires an exceptionally reliable input of position, navigation, and time data. With a combination of Global Navigation Satellite System and Eleran, that all meets its needs. Current Uses and Developments At sea, a new concept for navigation, enhanced navigation, or known as e-navigation, is being developed, which requires an exceptional reliability of input position, navigation, and time data, as previously stated in the other slide. Uniquely, the combination of global navigation satellite systems and Eleran has the potential to meet its needs. For aviation, Eleran is being used in transport aviation as it is high cost and is used as a GPS backup due to the solar cycle that happens every 11 years. Undoubtedly, the Eleron system is a backup to the precise GPS with some differences. The notable fact that distinguishes the two is that GPS relies on the satellite signals whereas Eleron provides the information based on the radio signals, which then leads to the fact that the receivers require to be able to receive the transmitted information precisely. In contrast to the importance of these systems' receivers, there are not many different types of aileron and GPS receivers. Namely, there is a company such as Relectronica that has integrated the aileron positioning along with GPS positioning information into a universal Eleron GPS receiver. The integrated receiver, which has been available since 2005, is able to provide reliable positioning information even if GPS or Eleron are weak or absent. Thus, it provides reliable positioning information. Most importantly, Relectronica's integrated Aileron GPS technology provides position, time, and frequency in GPS-hostile environments, including dense urban environments and situations where GPS is being unintentionally or intentionally disrupted. This company released an integrated receiver in March 2017 which is very small and it's only 6 cm. Although there is a limited amount of integrated receivers regarding the fast advancing aviation industry, the more efficient receivers are being anticipated to be utilized by the authorities. On that